Hello, and welcome to another session of Metrology Coffee Break from CMM XYZ. Today, we'll be talking about the OTP Smart Scope. Um, I have one of our application specialists with us, Akmal, um, but we're doing something a bit different today in terms of going into the software and showing you direct benefits and how to use it. Akmal, I don't know if you want to touch a bit on that. Um, yeah, so we're going to show um, uh, how to uh, measure the uh, demo block with the OGP system using Zone 3. And uh, we're going to uh, perform very quick measurements on some of the features uh, and, and show the, uh, the laser uh, scanning uh, uh, capability of the machine. Um, and also uh, the, the video measuring uh, capability. And after that, uh, you're going to see, uh, we're going to also show how to use the probe uh, to uh, measure as a traditional CMM on, on with this equipment. Okay, perfect. So we'll dive right into that, and uh, Akmal will show you how it's done and the benefits of the software and indeed the smart scope. So over to you, Akmal. In this exercise, we are going to use the Zone 3 demo block to. Um, First of all, perform uh, an alignment to uh, the datum specified in the uh, GDT drawing shown. Uh, as you can see, the uh, top surface is the um, datum A, and so we're going to measure that uh, first as a plane. So you can see over here, I'm using the focus tool, and uh, I'm going to pick seven points using the path generation to uh, generate seven focus points on the top surface which is my datum A on the part. Um, so it's going to measure and uh, it's going to measure seven focus points as you can see here. I'm going to label that datum A and then I'm going to uh, go ahead and measure uh, the datum B and C. In this case, the datum B will be picked as a uh, line. And so you can see that was picked on the CAD model. And now um, we're going to adjust the lighting to make it into the backlight, which is uh, more appropriate for uh, the measurement of this edge. And uh, we're going to, again, use the path generator in order to um, generate uh, segments of the feature finder um, which will be used as you can see uh, to measure the edge so it has generated three segments uh, we perform the measurement and uh, we have labeled that datum B uh, we can do the same thing for our datum C which is the line uh, or the edge on the left side of the part um, basically doing the same thing with datum C uh, generating the segments automatically and then executing uh, you'll see that the label uh, datum C is already um, automatically um, uh, automatically typed in for uh, the line two, and um, there you go. So that our alignment is now complete uh, using the three features, uh, as you can see. And uh, now we're going to show you um, how to uh, make measurements on a. Uh, uh, on a curve. So uh, in this case, uh, this is a special case. So we're just measuring an uh, organic curve. Uh, as you can see, it's not a straight line. It's just an organic uh, curve that looks like a um, like a sine function. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to generate the path for it automatically. And again, we're using the feature finder uh, to uh, measure the edge of this line. OK, so once that's done, um, we're going to uh, hit save on that and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try and see how the uh, measured data for that looks like so if you enable the points uh, on your uh, graphic window you'll be able to see the, uh, the data that was extracted um, and then we can use that data uh, to fit a feature to it so now uh, you can see I'm using the data extractor which is a, um, a, a tool under the acquired data tab that will allow you to extract just a segment of that curve that we previously measured. So you can see over here using just the selection window to select the portion of the data I'm interested in and then extracting uh, that segment and uh, then fitting a circle to it. Okay, so um, that was that. And then th the next exercise uh, we're going to show is a, um, 
uh, on the blob tool. So blob tool is a special tool uh, that will allow you to extract um, uh, a bunch of data points. Um, it basically works based on measuring um, uh, the different brightness threshold that's uh, on the um, underlying image. So uh, it basically looks at the color of the pixels in a certain area and then uh, based on a light polarity it will give you the data points that are on the bright or the dark sections. So in this case what we're doing is we're trying to uh, basically scan uh, a chip that's on the demo block and what we have done is we have generated a path to cover uh, basically uh, the entire uh, surface area of the chip and we did that by generating uh, the segments uh, based on a grid of known length and width and uh, that generated all the segments that were needed and uh, it uh, performed the scan uh, now you can see that it has uh, basically captured all of the uh, data points uh, and uh, those that, that data again could be used uh, using the data extractor tool in order to uh, fish uh, to, to fit uh, measured uh, primitives on, on, on your uh, uh, on your screen. As you can see we fit a circle and uh, you can see this is just a normal circle like any other feature and it has the uh, uh, nominal uh, components as shown and uh, you can adjust the tolerances um, um, accordingly and uh, the nominals are set based on the CAD model. So uh, over here I'm just um, showing the diameter value for the feature that was measured. Okay so you can see it, uh, that was pretty easy. Now the third, the third thing we're going to show is uh, uh, a laser scan. Okay, so in this case, uh, the first thing I did was uh, switch to the laser tool from my sensor. Uh, and now what I'm trying to do here is I am trying to um, uh, generate a path for the for the laser. Okay, and so um, I have the, the grooves on the front of the demo block and in this step we're generating a cut plane that will slice through the surface of uh, the block and generate the curves uh, that, will, that I will need uh, to, uh, to, uh, to show the, the, the laser scan or what path to take. Okay, so in this case, uh, the curves were generated and now uh, using the, uh, the jog box, I'm uh, basically uh, uh, putting uh, the start and finish point and then uh, I'm running the scan, um, uh, which you'll see the laser uh, li line scan will uh, uh, go from left to right as uh, it was, uh, as it was uh, shown to the path. And uh, now it's just performing the laser scan, and so the parameters for this are uh, basically adjusted in order to uh, 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 to capture points every uh, 10 microns. And uh, once that's done, um, we will then fit a uh, cylinder to the uh, one of the groups. Okay, so once the laser uh, scans are complete, as you can see here, we will then go ahead and uh, fit a cylinder to one of the uh, grooves. And so this will be again uh, the data extractor. And in this case, we're gonna show the three curves that were previously uh, uh, scanned separately or, or independent of each other. And so all three curves are selected under the features uh, for the data extractor. And now again, using the control uh, key on the keyboard, I'm just selecting a portion of the scan data and then fitting a cylinder to just one of the groups. Okay, and the final thing we're going to show is the uh, probing uh, sensor. So in this case, I have 
uh, a five um, a five tip uh, star probe that I have um, uh, set up, and I'm going to pick that from uh, the list of sensors um, that I have available. So I'm going to choose the uh, star probe um, that I've already set up here. So it's going to ask me to install that. So I'm going to say uh, OK to that. And then I'm going to go ahead and load that probe uh, manually, as you can see here. At this point, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just simply measure uh, um, uh, before I measure it. As you can see, it's showing the simulation of the probe tip, and I've just switched it to the appropriate tip that I'm going to pick, which is the one on the left side. And then I'm going to measure the circle shown on the screen. So uh, again, I'm using the uh, the probe and uh, I'm using the simple path generator in order to adjust the uh, parameters to my liking. And so in here, I'm just uh, measuring uh, five hits in total. Um, and then uh, just uh, making sure all the other settings are uh, the way that I like. And um, you can sh see the, the, the test path uh, by previewing it. And uh, you can see uh, once the points are generated, there's also a save point uh, generated automatically as well, which will ensure the probe safely approaches uh, your, your points. Uh, you, can, you can do a test run to just see the simulation of how it's going to perform. And then once you hit the play button, you will see that um, it's going to uh, go ahead and, and measure the, uh, uh, the probe um, um, uh, the way that it was shown in the simulation. Okay, so. All right, well, thank you very much, Akmal, for the presentation. That was really good. Uh, it was a really good deep dive on the smart scope and how to run parts on it. Um, we have some questions for you. Uh, the first question is, uh, what factors affect measurement performance on a smart scope? Um, so there's a variety of uh, factors affecting the, uh, the measurement performance. Um, well, you have to kind of first uh, look at the uh, project you're working on and kind of decide uh, what the machine is appropriate. Um, so first of all, um, uh, the magnification and the, uh, the image quality is what's very important about measurements. So uh, when you're performing a measurement, you need to make sure that uh, the image that you're getting on the video screen is uh, an image that has a very good contrast and uh, that the features are, are visible. So not all the time will you have uh, you know, projects where that would be very simple. So you have to kind of uh, do a lot of trial and error to come up with a good image that you can see very well or um, the lens sees very well, per se, uh, so that you can uh, capture the edges accurately. So that's one factor, is getting a good image um, that is sharp and has good magnification. Um, and also, um, the working distance, right? So as I said before, you have to first decide what machine is appropriate. So if, uh, if you have uh, an object that's um, uh, you know, an appropriate size for this machine, it can measure it easily, but if it's a bigger object, then you have to kind of think about whether you can measure it with this machine or whether you have to use some sort of a leapfrog method in order to uh, get the dimension that you're looking for. Um, and also, um, another factor affecting this would be the, um, the, the field of view, right? And so if you have features that are really small and they can all fit within the field of view of the, of the lens, then you could uh, measure them all in one shot, right? So it doesn't take very long to measure them. But if you have features that are very long, then you have to kind of move the stage to capture the entire feature, and so that will, uh, add to the time of the measurement, and so that will affect the performance. Um, so uh, again, if you have features that fit within the field of view, easily, uh, they, they can be easily measured, uh, but if you have features that are kind of big, then you have to do a leapfrog method or measure them in a couple of steps, and so that will obviously take longer. Um, so yeah, these uh, two or three factors will affect your performance, uh, mainly the, um, 
uh, quality of the image, uh, size of the, uh, the, uh, the object you're working with, and also the, uh, uh, the, the size of the features on the object. So, so Akmal, I have another question here. Uh, are there tools available to measure ragged, rough, or low contrast edges that are common on molded plastic parts? Um, yeah, yeah, there is um, a tool called the Weak Edge uh, tool. Uh, which is specifically uh, built or made for uh, um, edges that are uh, uh, low contrast or they are fuzzy looking on, on the screen. Um, uh, you know, not always will you have edges that will provide very good contrast, and so it won't be easy uh, to measure per se, but there are tools in the software which will allow for uh, measuring edges that don't have very good contrast. And so uh, specifically it's called the weak edge uh, tool, and what that does is uh, um, the has an edge detection algorithm which uh, measures from a dark to light area and so you make the light setting appropriate to get sort of a dark to light contrast going on the edge and then um, it allows for the fine tuning of the parameters for the uh, algorithm in order to basically snap your samples to the exact area where uh, you prefer. Uh, so there's a lot of controls given uh, to the user to adjust the strength and uh, the, um, the uh, the intensity or threshold of the algorithm in order to make it snap to the uh, to the edge that you want. So uh, uh, what that means is that it will allow for uh, consistent and uh, repeatable measurements of uh, edges that are uh, fuzzy or, or ragged edges. Thank you. Um, I've got one more question here. Uh, what is why would one choose an OGP machine over a CMM? So uh, the OGP machine um, as uh, uh, as seen in the, in the, in the demonstration, uh, has uh, a lot of different sensors, uh, so it allows for uh, sort of like a complete uh, measurement package. Um, um, so uh, the, the, the fact that you have multiple sensors allows you to uh, perform different types of measurements which are not uh, um, uh, really uh, possible with traditional CMM machines. So, uh, you know, the fact that you have an optical sensor allows you to perform measurements uh, sort of in a, in a visual way or uh, in an optical way. Uh, but you also have the uh, capability of, uh, of a laser, uh, a TTL laser, which will allow you to perform line scans, which are obviously not possible with a traditional probing system. Uh, and if there is a need for a probing system, that is also uh, available uh, in, in this machine. So you could have a probing uh, component, which will allow you to measure uh, features, for example, if they're on the side or, or on, a, on an area on the part that's not accessible. You could still use the probe to access those features. Um, uh, and the good thing is that all of these sensors are uh, combined into one package and they're also all controlled through one software, Zone 3. And so everything is kind of baked into one software so it's accessible to the user in one spot. So uh, you don't have to move around uh, with your data from one software to another. Uh, everything is kind of packaged in one deal. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a nice package to have uh, if you have multiple uh, different features that you want to measure, uh, which might not be possible with the traditional CMM but it will be possible with, with the OGP system. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for your time. Um, if you have any additional questions or would like a demonstration, uh, you can contact us at our website, uh, www.cmmxyz.com. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.